الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون My brothers and sisters in Islam it is the day of Eid and I'm surprised I see so many of you here as we mentioned this morning inshallah ta'ala we will go over it for those that were not here the Eid prayer when it falls on a Friday the Jum'ah is not compulsory for those who wish not to pray it but since we are here and since it is compulsory for the Imam to come and to lead the Jum'ah prayers because maybe some people were not there for the Eid Salah maybe some people had traveled maybe some people just felt like coming for Salatul Jum'ah right which is completely fine it is not something that you don't have or you should not come you can come if you want to come and that is completely fine so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us on this day of Eid to enjoy our time with our family members and to remember as we reminded ourselves this morning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the verse of the Quran شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم. So at the beginning of the month of Ramadan, we always quote we always quote this verse of the Quran, this ayah of the Quran, and we tell ourselves and remind ourselves that it's important when we see the moon that we must fast during this month of Ramadan. But Subhanallah, the month is gone. Our guest that we welcomed, that we held on to, that we stood standing and serving every single night for 29 days has gone and left us. And now we are left with nothing more than the exact same Lord that we worshipped. The exact same Lord that we worshipped inside of Ramadan is the same Lord that we worship outside of Ramadan. And that's why at the beginning when I said I will remind people that they don't have to come for Jum'ah, but I'm actually pleased and happy to see that people came for Salatul Jum'ah. Because they remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they continue to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even on the day when they're supposed to be having fun and enjoying themselves and meeting with family and friends and relatives and you know, uh, in, indulging in beautiful foods and pastries and desserts. We still remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is the brothers and sisters, those that open the cover of the Qur'an on the day of Eid. Those are the people who will most likely open the Qur'an for the rest of the days of the year until the next Ramadan. And those of the brothers and sisters who pray extra salawat, who pray extra nawafil, extra sunnah, those are the brothers and the sisters who will hold on to this deen insha'Allah ta'ala and carry the light as we notice the convention is coming. Carry the light of this deen and bring it from day to day to day until the next month of Ramadan begins in 11 months. So my brothers and sisters, at the end of that verse, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlighted to us, He gave us some blessings of the month of Ramadan. Things that we should do after the month has come. And after the month has ended as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, I won't go over the whole verse because the time uh, is a little bit restricted. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ Now we mentioned this morning in the khutbah for those that were here, that the days were extremely long, the nights were short, and we didn't eat much food. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it possible for us. He made it extremely easy for us to fast during the month of Ramadan. So easy that many of us felt subhanAllah today as we were eating after, after Eid Salah, you know, people dispersed and went home or went outside and had a burger. People are looking at this burger thinking, am I supposed to eat this? 
It's 11 o'clock, 10.30 in, in the afternoon, in the morning. Am I supposed to eat this? Am I allowed to eat this? It feels weird. And subhanAllah, we went home and my mother, she says, you know, sometimes it takes me a whole month to readjust and realize I can actually eat something throughout the day. And so we miss the blessings of Ramadan so much. We miss the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves when we do things that make us the closer, that, that, sorry, that we do things that make us get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, if we love that feeling, and we cherish that feeling, and we wish and desire to continue to have that feeling, continue to do the good actions and amal. Continue to make dua. Continue to ask for forgiveness. Continue to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ud'uni astajib lakum. He doesn't say, call upon me during Ramadan, I will answer your dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ud'uni astajib lakum. Ud'uni astajib lakum. Call upon me, I will answer you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the command, Ud'uni. He doesn't say, when you feel like it, when you have some time, then and you think of me, then maybe you might want to throw a dua in here or there. No, he gives us the command, Ud'uni, call upon me. You need something, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Astajib lakum. Any time of day, any time of night. And we notice subhanAllah when Ibrahim, Ibrahim alayhi salam, when the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he was talking to the people who would worship the stars and worship the sun and worship the moon, he would tell them and question them, so what happens when your Lord, meaning the star or the sun or the moon, disappears? Do you have to wait until the nighttime comes back so that you can see the moon and call your Lord? When the sun is in the sky during the day, you can call upon your Lord whenever you want. But at night time, you have to wait and tell yourself, oh, you know what, there's still another five hours before I can ask God for something. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ud'uni astajib lakum. Call upon me any time, any day or night. He doesn't specify. He will answer. And we notice, subhanAllah, during the month of Ramadan, we strive so hard to pray, tahajjud, and qiyam al-layl, especially during the last ten nights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every single morning of the entire year, 365 days of the year, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, during the last third of the night, comes down to the lowest level of the skies. He comes down to the lowest level of the skies. And he asks his angels, who from amongst my servants is asking for forgiveness? Who from amongst my servants are asking for something from me? And that's not in Ramadan. That's in every single month, every single day. Without fail, every single day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down and asks the angels, who from my servants is, is seeking my forgiveness? And those that are mentioned by the angels to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those who wake up in the middle of the night. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ During the month of Ramadan, I don't remember now if I translated that part to you. Allah says when he, you know, the, in the part that I just mentioned, that He wants ease for us. He wants things for to be easy for us in life and not to be hard upon us. But we notice as we mentioned Ramadan, the days are long. But subhanAllah, look at that. During the month of Ramadan, we sacrifice our time in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshipping. But then we also notice that there's so much barakah placed in our sleep that we might get two hours of sleep, three hours of sleep, four hours of sleep, when we normally would require seven, eight, nine hours of sleep in order to feel refreshed. But we went the entire month on an, on an empty tank. We went an entire month on an empty tank and we did it with ease. When we look back now, like we mentioned this morning, it's like the blinking of an eye. It's gone. And we did it so many days over and over. 
And now after Ramadan, when we're laying in our beds and we had six hours, seven hours, eight hours of sleep, it should be easier for us to wake up. Why does it become difficult? That's because we stop our own selves from seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when we wake up and push hard once, the second day, we push a little less harder. When we get up on the second day, we notice it's a lot easier. Then we wake up on the third day and it doesn't seem so hard anymore. The fourth day, it seems a lot easier. And those that do this regularly will notice that subhanAllah, they can't go a single night without waking up for Qiyam al -Layh. They can't go a single night without waking up for Qiyam al -Layh. And subhanAllah, I've had the blessing of traveling the world with some of our shuyukh and scholars. And subhanAllah, I've been in my hotel room. We go down for Salat al-Fajr in the musalla, or we say at a certain time we will meet downstairs in the lobby or a certain you know, hotel room, and we're going to go and pray Salat together. And I notice some of those shuyukh, subhanAllah, without fail, even if they landed after a two-day journey, they will still be up for tahajjud. They will still be up for tahajjud. They will still make sure, even though they're jet-lagged beyond belief, their brain is in another world. They don't even know what day it is of the week. Sometimes they even lose track which month it is of the year due to the amount of traveling that they do. But they will never forget the time for tahajjud. So my brothers and sisters, if we want to get closer to Allah, He will make it easier for us. He will definitely make it easier for us. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد my brothers and sisters in Islam, in the verse that we recited, it continues to go on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ وَلِيْتُكْمِلُ الْعِدَّةِ وَلِيْتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ وَلِيْتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهِ This is the day of Eid. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves when we continue to praise and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So continue to do that throughout your day. Continue to do it throughout the year. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ That we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why would we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having gone through such a rigorous month? For having gone through such difficulty? Why would we thank Him? Because it's brought us so much closer to Him. It has made us such better individuals. We are now so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we miss coming to the masjid at 9.30 or 10.30 at night. We miss standing until midnight. At 10 o'clock at night, you will probably notice tonight, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, you will look at your watch and say, this is weird. Why am I at home? I should be praying to, uh, taraweeh. I should be in the masjid. Why am I at home? Something feels as though it's missing. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ You notice that while we were worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was with ease, it was with pleasure, it was with air conditioning. Right? In the winter, it is with heating. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with things that so many people in different parts of the world do not get. Those that were with us this morning know that we mentioned in some countries, they will be sitting or standing and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the month of Ramadan and bombs will be flying over their head. We also notice that some people in different parts of the world, they even are not allowed to leave their homes to go to a masjid. The doors of the masjid are locked. Those, those masajid are now museums. There are some who in countries like Greece, they are not allowed to have a masjid. So they pray in the basements of the people. Go and check this on the internet. Go and see the difficulty of the Muslimin. Go and check how much of a struggle it is for them. Yet they still thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we thank Allah? 
Do we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The people from the, you know, subhanAllah, the government come in and address us and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and to guide them as well towards Iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us to understand and to open our hearts, to make us understand what is best for us and to make them understand what is best for the entire nation and society, not just for the Muslimin, for the Muslims as well as the non-Muslims. Ameen. We notice that subhanAllah, they come in some areas of the country, they will refuse to enter your masjid. In this country. You will notice that there might even be some politicians that will refuse to come and see the Muslims. And when they say that they invite Muslims, who are they inviting? But we also see that some have a soft spot for the deen. And we should welcome the soft spot for the deen. We should try and encourage them not to just come and address us, but encourage them to listen to our speech as well. Encourage them to stay and to listen and see who the real Muslims are. Not the Muslims of CNN and Fox and BBC. The real Muslims that are sitting in the masajid. The real Muslims that are serving in the food banks. The real Muslims that are building shelters. The real Muslims that are building rehab centers for the Muslims as well as the non-Muslims who are struggling from drug abuse. These are the real Muslims. Look right, look left, look in front of you, look behind you, look in the mirror, you're the real Muslim. We are the real Muslims. We don't want to be labeled and branded as terrorists. We aren't. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make those who come and address us from the government to also sit and listen to us, to attend and to benefit. And maybe Allah will open their heart towards this deen as well. My brothers and sisters, we conclude by sending peace and blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as his angels and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself as mentioned in the Qur'an. إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ويسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى to make this deen flourish ويسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى to open our hearts to this deen ويسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى to open the hearts of the non-Muslims towards this deen ويسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى to make us thankful to him for the ease that he's given us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Canada before a day comes where it's taken away from us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to let a day come where we are felt like second class citizens. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us be from those who are exemplary individuals who walk the streets of Mississauga, Oakville, the Peel region, the GTA, Ontario, all the provinces of Canada and the rest of the world as exemplary individuals who show the world this is Islam. Ameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and accept all of our efforts that we've done throughout the month of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us of all our sins that we have passed and that we have done in the past. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all of our family members that have passed away. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant those that are sitting on the chairs the ability to taste the sweetness of, of, of placing their head on the ground in sujood and to make it easy for them to loosen their joints, to make it easy for them to pray and to make sujood. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure all those that are sick and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide all of our family members that are misguided and have moved away from this deen. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha anil fahsha'i wal munkari wal baghi يَعِذُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ اُذْكُرُ اللَّهَ يَذْكُرْكُمْ وَدْعُوهُ يَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ وَلَذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا تَسْنَعُونَ أَبِنِ الصَّلَى